Hello. Welcome to the introduction to Generation 6.1 of Life's Principles. I'm thrilled to share with you um, our most recent uh, and latest update to Life's Principles. This is actually the first update in uh, more than eight years. Um, they've been that robust and super strong, and Generation 6 uh, was introduced um, about eight years ago. And here we are today sharing with you a few upgrades and tweaks that uh, we've made in light of lessons learned and input received and even advancing science. And so I'm going to walk you through, I'm going to start with the old life's principles, and I'm going to walk you through each of the changes that we made. You'll notice that it's still generation 6.1, so it's not radically different. So no need to be like, oh, I've been using them and now I have to panic. Um, but you'll see what's ahead and um, hopefully you'll reach out if you have any questions. We're super excited and we'll be rolling out the changes in all of our materials uh, over the next few months. But in the meantime, we'll give you a peek at what is coming. So I'm going to actually walk through it um, from the definition side because the bulk of our changes are in the definitions of how we're defining um, the life's principles doesn't mean that they, they haven't fundamentally changed in their meaning, but the, the definition is a little bit more nuanced. So I'm going to walk you through all of the changes using um, the, the backside, if you will, of our two page life's principle document that we share with folks, because this is you know, just an easier place to to make note of it. So starting over on the right side, we really dug into the question and the, the master wedge of use life-friendly chemistry. This is the one that probably needed the most work and indeed you'll see um, a significant number of changes in this wedge. So we're gonna start with that. This is um, some excellent contributions from our biomimic Mark Dorfman. Um, and this work was supported by several other biomimics um, more closely, including Daphne Fesher Lippens and Britt Gerlinga. And of course myself worked on this. And then we had input from, from others that have been in our community for a long while. So let's start with the first one. Um, the first is just the definition of the master principle of use life friendly chemistry. Um, it used to say use chemistry that supports life processes, kind of already built into the title. So we wanted to be a little bit more explicit in what we're talking about. And it's both uh, the materials and processes. That's what we mean when we're talking about life friendly chemistries, materials and processes that support life systems but across all scales. So a little bit of a nuance, but also important to add to that question. The next thing we did is we moved breakdown products into benign constituents a little bit further down, um, partially because there's sort of a, a nice way to talk about how things build here. And when we're talking about the end product breaking down, made sense for that to come further down the process of building up and then breaking down. We also um, changed the definition here, and now it reads to use components that readily decompose into life-friendly byproducts. So you can see not too different from the original definition, but some important nuances. The next thing that we did was change the definition of, um, or, or actually the name of the principle, build selectively with a small subset of elements. As you'll soon see, there's actually kind of two principles that got mashed together with that principle. And as a result, it, it did confuse folks. They didn't quite always understand what build selectively meant. Um, it does refer to a small subset of elements and it refers to how they're assembled. So we broke those two apart. So now the principle specifically refers to first, use a small subset, small subset of elements. And this is around achieving functionality, super important in chemistry. Um, so we're achieving that functionality by using relatively few elements in both key proportions and key positions in the molecules. That's a little bit what we were getting at with the idea of elegance um, in the former definition. And now we're more explicitly calling that out. 
Then we updated um, chemistry in water. And it's not just in water, but it's also with water. So this principle's name now reads do chemistry in and with water. Um, and this is actually recognizing that water is not just a solvent. I mean, that's a big change, but there's actually many multifunctional properties of water. And of course, as you study life's principles and you know these, you begin to get into those details. So we don't name them all here, um, but know that we're, we're actually trying to leverage those really kind of unique properties that water offers. And uh, life does that. It leverages all of those multifunctional properties. And then the last one, the big exciting one, um, this is the only new principle that has joined the list. So instead of being 26 principles, it is now 27 life's principles. And we're calling this employing elegant processes. And um, please know that every word was very, very carefully chosen in the process, both recognizing how does this translate, not just in a transdisciplinary way, but how does it also translate in multiple languages? And obviously we're not putting elegant processes on payroll, but we're really wanting as we use life's principles to think about, well, life employs this. It uses these elegant processes and so should we. And so that's where um, that language came from. Elegance was also a big, big topic of discussion for us because that one, you know, it does struggle a little bit, especially for folks with English as a second language. Elegant sort of implies that you're maybe showing up in a ballroom gown. But what we're really trying to get across with um, elegant in elegant processes is that they are so well designed. I mean, with 3.85 billion years of R&D, you know, those, those, those processes and chemistry processes are, are quite exquisite. Um, and not in the, the aesthetic way, although it is both aesthetic, but how well tuned and how perfected uh, they are. And so in this case, when we're talking about life's processes at the, in, you know, chemical processes, it's both the building and the regulation that uses two really important things. One is shape complementarity. You can think of like a puzzle piece fitting inside of another piece, um, but then also easily reversible interactions, which of course is tied to the principle at the bottom of breakdown into benign and useful constituents. So the first five changes you can see are all here in this particular wedge. Um, it, it required a lot of thinking and we're pretty excited at how it ended up. The other sort of big notable change in terms of a name change of a principle, this principle of be resource efficient and then kind of parentheses, material and energy was a little bit always awkward. It just didn't roll very easily. Really what we want to say, and because it goes a little bit beyond efficiency, and efficiency is sort of like kind of a default way that humans think about trying to be sustainable. And it's it's actually more about being resourceful. So that allows being resourceful, allows us to capture both the ideas of efficiency and effectiveness. Um, and that's both in terms of material and energy. So we got rid of the, the parentheses and it just, it's a little bit more snappy, if you will. So be resourceful with material and energy is the sixth change. That also imparted a little bit more of a specific definition. Um, here we come back to bring in the word optimize. Of course, optimizing is true across all principles, but it felt important to really call it out here. So it's both optimizing the use of resources, and these could be material and energy resources, as well as taking advantage of opportunities. And those of you who may remember some of the earlier generations of life's principles, we used to have one in there called life is opportunistic. And indeed it is life uh, is opportunistic, but not in the way that it, it warrants its own life's principle by itself, because really what it is being opportunistic about is, you know, what's captured here with materials and energy, right? Opportunities to use materials and energy uh, well. So that's what's captured here in this new definition um, under be resourceful with material and energy. We also updated the definition under recycle all materials. Um, 
Closed loop started to have people think about just a singular loop, but really um, we know in biological systems that loop is fairly large in how it's defined. Um, and in fact, it's almost like more like a web and a network. Um, but the key is, is that materials are in flow, right? They're in connected flow. And there's a problem when they get locked up. They get when they get locked up and are unavailable for use. So keeping materials in a um, connected flow is really what we want to achieve when we're talking about recycling all materials, which is of course very different than many human systems, which is, you know, make waste or make use waste and dump it in a landfill. So that's our eighth change. Our ninth change is also a definitional change. Um, to be a little bit clearer about not just repeating what we mean by integrate development with growth by using development and growth in the definition, what we're really talking about is how you invest. And it could be both time and energy and resources and effort. Um, so balancing investments to move towards an enriched system. So why is it that you want to you want to balance development with growth? Is that overall the system is better because of it? It's an enriched system, um, and so that's what we're capturing there in that new updated definition. Again, none of these definitions change the fundamental meaning of what the life's principle was about, but are more explicit and clear about what we're trying to say with this life's principle. Under self-organize, um, we had just, we, if you can see, we had to move toward an enriched system just under self-organizing when the reality is even building from the bottom up and combining modular and nested components and, of course, integrating development with growth as a master principle are all moving towards that enriched system. So it came out of that definition and moved up uh, a level to the master principle level. So the next change I want to talk about here is under adapt to changing conditions. Um, this is around incorporating diversity, still stays the name of the principle, but we're more, again, more explicit that we're talking about a variety of forms, processes, and systems, same from the original one, um, to interact with one's external environment, right? So it's really about... Um, that interaction that allows for the diversity. It's not necessarily contained within, but the changing conditions are the conditions surrounding an organism, right? As you can see in that definition, appropriately respond to dynamic context, the context in which an organism lives. And so having diversity of ways to respond to that context is the idea behind this principle. This 12th change, um, embody resilience, kind of had its definition in the title. So we shortened it to just be clear. We need to embody resilience. How do you go about in embodying resilience? Is then maintaining that function following disturbance, that's the definition of resilience, by incorporating variation, redundancy, and decentralization. Um, and so bringing that into the definition right there, rather than unpacking variation, redundancy, and decentralization as we had done in the original uh, definition. So this is a lot clearer um, and really focuses on the key piece, which is, is making sure that we don't ignore, um, just as life does not, and, and in, it includes um, resilient strategies. So no changes to the be locally attuned and responsive wedge, no changes to the evolve to survive wedge. And this is now what the new diagram with its definitions look like. And um, with this, we'll also share the new image um, as we go out and we update our design lens and our courses and all the different places where we've, um, we use life's principles. It's such a powerful tool that we've used it in so many places that it's going to take us a little bit of time to get all of these changes. Uh, feel free to reach out. Let us know if you see it somewhere that we haven't caught it. And especially if you still see it towards the end of the year, our goal is to really try to capture all of these and be done with this um, updating process in the first quarter of 2024. So thank you for spending a little bit of time. Hopefully this makes these even more powerful and more clear as you use life's principles in your work in biomimicry. Thank you. Have a good day.